Hey everyone, it's Kat and Amber. And we are walking to the store, or actually in the middle of walking to the store to pick up a few extra supplies. And we thought we would share with you our top five things that we love about Southeast Asia. Why food and rings? <laughs> and, you know, because we're old, we're going to be looking at notes because, you know. But anyway, we're sitting outside of a hotel slash restaurant that is closed down but they have a chair and table outside and it's a nice breeze mm -hmm. we're socially distancing and we got a bag of rice so yeah we'll start number one is going to be safety yes definitely a number one mostly because if you compare anywhere really that we've been in southeast asia to your a city in the united states the, just the feel of safety, being able to walk around early in the morning, even late at night, even by yourself. Um, it's just, you actually feel like you'll be fine. Yep. It's, it, it, and it is partly perception, it's true. I mean, you don't wanna go out and do anything stupid, stupid. like you would anywhere, um, even in America. But it's definitely a different vibe. The energy is different. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you stay on you know, the well-worn paths, where there's plenty of people, usually, you'll be just fine. Yeah, you know, um, bodily threat has not been an issue. Um, pickpockets, sure. Right. But if that's the worst that can happen to me, I'm okay with that. In America, I wouldn't go out after 11 o'clock by myself. I wouldn't go down an alleyway. I wouldn't walk to the store. None of those things. So safety has been a huge concern, so much so, in fact, or it's been such a great thing for us, is that we let the boy walk out by himself he wants to go get something to eat see you later you want to go to the store see you later uh, and then he dates when before pre-covid he would do daily walks by himself so yeah, yeah. no it's, it's nice it's really nice especially like she said as a parent you just feel like you said you want to let your kid go out and just do anything and be anywhere with anybody but you feel like they can walk around unhindered um, and without being, you know, harmed or approached, really, they can just walk the streets like, like the adults can. And right. kids do. Plenty of kids here do go to the store. They go run errands. They got scooters on their own. Yeah, they live in a good life. Yep. All right. And number two out of five. Number two is culture. The culture. Yeah, like it's specifically, For the culture. <laughs> specifically. Um, like cultural sites, um, particularly ones that they've uh, maintained since ancient times. I mean, every country, every um, every region has its uh, has its ruins and has its history. Um, and the, but the history here is just so rich all over. And Southeast it's active. Asia. And active. That's true. Even the people, um, the local people, visit their own sites very frequently. Right. The temples are very active. Yeah. The energy is there. Uh, there may be a lot of tourists there, but there are also people worshiping there. So that right there is a, it's a huge thing. And then you add to that, America just doesn't have anything old. Yeah. And what we do is slave ground. Huh. So, you know, with some old buildings on the East Coast. Yep. So, yeah. Culture. For the culture. Definitely. And number three. Number three would be food. Of you know, that's course. our favorite thing, y'all. Yeah, we've been gaining weight. Unless, you know, the opposite of what everybody said, we, 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 we found heaven, and it's some noodles, <laughs> and some curry, right? Everywhere we've been, there has been particular items that we've enjoyed wholeheartedly, things we've never experienced before. Um, Thai food in Thailand was better than Thai food in the U.S., very close, but just mm -hmm. a different level of richness and depth and spicy, because Amber is a spice queen. Y'all, I was in heaven. Take me back. Somebody take me back. Drop me off. Yes. Anywhere in Thailand. Anywhere. <laughs> and in Cambodia, it was really presentation, right? And they were very proud of their local foods as well. But presentation was always a huge thing there. I mean, even the coffee shops. I mean, every meal that you had was just beautifully presented. Uh, Wait staff everywhere you go. So, you know, it's the little things that add up that have made this a fantastic ex food experience. And we haven't probably even nicked the surface of the food that we could have had. Oh, that's true. Now that you mentioned waitstaff, the customer service. Like, really just great. 
just period. Every time you go to a restaurant, like it can at first it's a little bit weird because it's extra, it's, right? Because as Americans, we're used to having our space and we're used to you know ordering, we get ready, and nobody bothering us. But they're very attentive, very much you know, and it's something to get used to. But you have to appreciate it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's been a, a great thing. Uh, Malaysia was the seafood. Vietnam has been seafood here in Da Nang. Rice dishes, noodle dishes. It's just been really, really good. And Singapore was the food halls. But we all tried different things every meal. Uh, it's like a big food court, but well past the food court experience that you would get at any mall in America. Because it's, you know, four star restaurants, five star restaurants, and these food halls. So, yeah, every country has been a foodie experience. And number four would be. It's similar to this, but coffee shop culture. Like, yes. We do coffee shops in America, but we don't do coffee we shops don't the way they do, do it in South Asia. We just know. Man, the coffee shops here, let me take this mask off, <laughs> it's starting to get hot. Coffee shops everywhere in Southeast Asia have been extraordinary, right? I mean, wow. The, just the setup. Yeah. They're Even beautiful. If, yeah. They're Even really beautiful. The coffee isn't always the best. The best. It's the it's the culture. It's mm -hmm. the like a place to go and to just sit and chill and um, and not be bothered. You can work, you can eat all in one place. You can have meetings or you can just read, and no one is really rushing you out. Like mm -hmm. it's really it's it can Starbucks. be like an all day thing. <laughs> Literally, it looks at stop them out. <laughs> right, but yeah. Coffee shops here are workspaces. They are gathering spaces. They are communal spaces. They are life. They're all really decorated super nicely. Um, food is great. It's just so so. Because, you know, it's a hit and miss sometimes. The um, coffee can be excellent to so so. There's generally AC. Uh, some places don't have it. There's free Wi Fi 99% of the time. So we have like gotten to the coffee shop life. I don't know what we're gonna do when we move somewhere else, because you know we we like working out of the coffee shop. Yeah, we have our favorites, and they're they're used to seeing us. They're happy to see us. They know what we want to a certain extent, uh, and they want to know our names and say hi. And they ask for the boy when he's not there. Where's the boy? You know. So it's it's been great. Yeah, we'll miss it. We will. Hopefully, we'll get it in our next country. But we're creative in the house. Right. At the like table. We're doing right now. Exactly. And number five. Number five. Number five is cheap flights. Yes. Between countries. Yep. I mean, a hundred bucks, you'll be in another country. You can do that in Europe, but we're not in Europe. So we're talking about Southeast Asia. You can't do it in America. Now you can get a cheap flight to another state. That's, you know, that's fine. But you can't get a cheap flight to another country. Right. Round trip, 100 bucks, grab a backpack, don't pack a huge bag, and go and explore for the weekend or for the week. 100 bucks or less. There are some $25 flights out there to another country. Right. You know, get another visa stamp, see the world. That was what we were looking for when we came out here, to be able to do that and with ease. And we've been able to do that pre-COVID, of course. Right. Once COVID came, that shut everything down. But hey, before then, we were having a blast. Yeah, man. We were having a blast. So, yeah. So, number five was cheap flights. And let's talk about them all again. Number one was? Safety. Well, number two was? Culture. Number three was? Food. Number four was? Coffee shop culture. And number five? Are the cheap flights, baby. Come to Asia, enjoy all the top of those five, and see the world. We are Wandering Soup, and I am Kat. I'm Amber. And yay, she saw her face. She saw her face. Say hi again to the culture. What the culture? <laughs> What's up, y'all? You better wear y'all masks. <laughs> I was about to pass out, y'all. It's hot. But the breeze is actually really, really nice, and we're in a really good spot. Um, so, yeah. All top five reasons why we love Southeast Asia. We're going to head back to the house, get some lunch in us. It's a good afternoon. Get some coffee, get some juice, and order some meat. Anyway, that's us. Peace and love, y'all.